Hello, and welcome to Virtual Investor Conferences. My name is Cecilia Schoenbaum, and on behalf of OTC Markets, as well as our co-host, Skyline Corporate Communications Group, we're very pleased you've joined us for our next live presentation from Swing Your Bag. Before I introduce our speaker, a few points to note. Please submit your questions in the question box to the bottom left of the slide. Once the Q&A session has ended, don't log out. You will automatically be transferred into the Swing Your Bag booth where you can continue to ask questions via chat and access additional shareholder materials. On a final note, all of today's presentations will be recorded and available for 24-7 replay. At this point, I'm very pleased to welcome Mike Bellardi, Chief Executive Officer of Sling Your Bag, which trades on the OTCQB venture market under the symbol SLBG. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining the uh, Slinger Bag presentation. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, how we've got to where we are today uh, currently with Slinger Bag. Uh, we've, we're a new startup company. Uh, we've been uh, operating for a little over two years, but actually been trading uh, oper operationally for about uh, nine months. Um, Please take note of the, uh, the disclaimer that uh, we have, which uh, you know, deals with any forward-looking statements that I might talk about during this presentation. Uh, whilst that's on the screen, you know, Slinger Bag is operating within the uh, sporting goods environment. We class ourselves as a sport tech company. Um, our focus as uh, we operate today is on the ball sports uh, segment of the uh, sports industry. Uh, particularly focused at the moment on racket sport, tennis, uh, pickleball, paddle tennis, beach tennis, uh, these, these sports. Um, and uh, Slinger came about, it's a very interesting story, Slinger came about on the, on the tennis courts of Israel. Our founder, a guy called Joe Kalfa, he's a very successful businessman in his own right, um, but he's also an avid tennis player. Luckily, he can get on the court uh, you know, pretty much every day. And, uh, you know, one of the challenges that all tennis players face all over the world is finding regular playing partners, playing partners who are of the same level of uh, ability, let's say, as, as, as each other. Um, and if, if a player is either better or worse than the other player, then typically neither player really enjoys the, the on-court experience. And so finding that optimum partner is a, is a real challenge. And, in fact, in the industry of tennis, uh, the data tells us that 34% of all of the people who decided to drop or stop playing tennis over the past 12 months did so for, for the reason that they found it too difficult to find regular tennis players. And so this is a real issue in, 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 the, in the sport of tennis. And the good news is that it's a problem that Slinger Bag uh, is solving. Um, like, any, like any company, what's important for any investor looking at the company is the, the strength of the management team. Um, I would like to think that uh, you know we've we've got a team in place that uh, is exceptional. Um, all of our C-suite executives, uh, the, you know, particularly myself, the CFO and the COO, together we have more than a hundred years' experience in the sporting goods industry, leading global brands, uh, building businesses in you know around the globe, uh, setting up companies and uh, organizations, and 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 being highly successful. My background uh, specifically um, is in tennis. I used to, you know, when I was young, I was a tennis player and a tennis pro. Then I led uh, a division of Wilson Sporting Goods in, in Europe, the racket sports division. And I was lucky enough in my career at Wilson to introduce a couple of groundbreaking products to the market that really defined and changed the business for, for Wilson, um, uh, which I also was able to do when I, when I was a prince. Uh, um, during the time that I was at Prince, uh, together with a couple of colleagues of mine, we actually acquired the company, took ownership of it together with a private equity group, and um, you know we we bought the company for $35 million in 2003. Four years later, we sold it for 112, took it from loss making to profitable, uh, very profitable business, and uh, eventually in 2016, I became the CEO of, of the Prince Tennis Company, which is one of the major tennis companies that exist in the world today. So, so I'd like to think that we have a team that uh, knows how to get this job done for Slinger and has the experience and the expertise to, 
to do it in, in an orderly fashion um, and uh, in, a, in a relatively short space of time. What's interesting for me is that when I was introduced to Slinger at the beginning of 2019, someone asked me to take a look at a video that was uh, currently still on our website. I looked at that video and, and my tennis instinct kicked in and told me that, wow, if this thing's as good as it looks, it does what it says it'll do, then it really can be a game-changing product in the world of tennis. Uh, I was so excited that I immediately got in contact. Luckily, I got hold of him, but I got in contact with the founder, Joe, uh, within 48 hours, I'd been got on a plane, gone to meet him, uh, gone on the court with the slinger bag, uh, tried it for myself and found out that, yeah, pretty much it did what it said, but it needed a lot of things doing to it. Uh, within another 48 hours, I'd agreed to take on the company and build it up from scratch, um, you know, as a CEO. Um, Joe, as he had developed the company before my time, had built a prototype. Uh, he had uh, taken it onto a Kickstarter campaign, which became the most successful uh, sports Kickstarter campaign of all time. Um, and he, you know, generated uh, crowdfunding orders of three and a half thousand units and raised, you know, around about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in doing so. He d he didn't do it for the money per se, but he did it to try and find out whether other tennis players around the world were interested in such a product, and and that certainly proved out. Um, I got involved in the beginning of 2019. I immediately spent uh, a lot of time in China sourcing the product, building the infrastructure that you require to have in place to, to build uh, high-quality and successful products in, in, in that part of the world. QC teams put them in place. Uh, vendor management teams put them in place, identified the right vendors for the product, went through about uh, eight or nine iterations uh, of the product until we felt that we had something that we could go into production with. Uh, and the first production of 5,000 units started around about you know, mid-November 2019. These 5,000 units were built to uh, satisfy the 3,500 people who had ordered on Kickstarter 18 months previously, and also to provide us with a, an amount of product which was available for, for me to seed into the market with uh, tennis influencers, with tennis players, with tennis coaches, to send to potential distributors around the world and other influential people who I had a lot of faith in that could give me the right kind of feedback on the quality of, um, of the product itself. Um, in, in doing all of this, of course, and particularly in satisfying the Kickstarter um, uh, court, uh, uh, crowd funders, um, we created for ourselves uh, quite a significant momentum and interest in the Slinger brand. Um, we decided to, um, I'm sorry, I need to move the slide on. Uh, I, we decided to um, uh, open a direct-to-consumer uh, platform in the United States uh, to try and take advantage of this momentum and demand that we had created. And, and that, that was launched uh, towards the end of uh, 2019. The thing that interests people for about Slinger Bag is, as you can see on the screen there, you know, there are three key criteria that make it successful. One is that it's, it's highly transportable, um, and, and as you can see there, that's a smart car. That's one of the smallest cars in the world, but it easily fits into the trunk of a, small, a smart car. It's also highly versatile, meaning that um, um, it's not just a, a tennis ball machine that, that fires tennis balls. It's actually a product whereby you can put all of your tennis gear into the bag itself. It'll store your rackets, your, your footwear, your apparel, um, all your valuables um, uh, and other things. It'll even it have a cable that will even charge your smartphone for you at the same time. Um, so it's very versatile. And, and the key thing that makes it interesting you know, and, and really spiked my attention when I saw it uh, the first time out was that at, at an entry price point of $550 retail to the consumer, um, it, it's somewhere close to you know, 30 to 50% below the market price of traditional tennis ball machines um, um, that offer the same kind of performance features that a slinger bag does. Um, at 33 pounds, it's, it's lightweight and easy to move around. Um, and it comes, um, you know, with a lithium-ion battery that's interchangeable. So the lithium-ion battery will last around about three and a half hours at full power, you know, if you're using it constantly. Um, 
but you know because it's interchangeable it means that you can buy a second battery you can you can charge the second battery and if you're playing for that long if you're a teaching pro for example you can simply uh, interchange the batteries it takes maybe 30 seconds to change the batteries just like a power tool and uh, you can carry on using this using the slinger bag its ball capacity is 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 very good at 144 balls and um, you know 72 of those balls can be easily carried within the bag itself while while it's being transported in terms of um, how we go to market, um, we operate two different ways. So in the United States, as I was saying, we, we operate a direct-to-consumer platform. Um, and uh, you know, this platform launched at the end, end of May. Within 30 days, we'd already pre-sold the first million dollars uh, to consumers in the United States. Um, and that's with uh, us asking them to give us the money uh, $700 in this case, and then wait, at that time it was 90 days, wait 90 days to receive the product. And we had so many people sign up that we cleared the first million in, in orders uh, around, after around about 30 days. That website is still open today, and the, the total orders that we have received through it as of yesterday is, is close to $4.5 million so far. In, uh, in July, middle of July, we, we started to receive the first uh, true inventory um, into the United States, and we started to satisfy those, or those orders that had come through on the e-commerce platform, um, you know, uh, back in, in May and, and June. And of course, you know, once those products started getting into the marketplace, again, the momentum and the interest in Slinger Bag continued to build. And you know, and it's never really waned uh, from that moment forward. Uh, despite all of the COVID issues in the world, um, we, we've continued to to bring in orders twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars per day. Uh, you know, and that continues. I think the orders so far today in the United States are, are still around about twenty thousand today, and we haven't finished uh, finished the sales activity for the day, of course, yet. So, it's, so it's you know, it's very successful in in the United States. Outside of the United States, uh, our go-to-market strategy is to partner with uh, independent third-party distributor companies. Um, because of my extensive experience within the tennis industry, I am able, you know, I know personally and I'm very easily able to find the optimum uh, distribution partner in every country around the world. Um, and and uh, already today, we have signed up uh, distributors to cover about 40 countries. Uh, across about 25 distributors, so some of them do multiple countries. Uh, and each of these distributors are independently successful in their own right in sports and particularly in tennis. They are very well financed companies. Uh, our two largest distributors, one is in Japan, which is the second largest tennis market in the world, um, is a publicly traded company on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, $500 million in revenue and 45 years of experience in tennis. Uh, uh, and the one that you can see on the screen here in Europe, we signed up with Dunlop. Dunlop is a, a very powerful company within the sport of tennis. Uh, it's got a very long hundred year history in, in tennis. And today it's owned by a, glo a, a global um, conglomerate in Japan called Sumitomo Rubber Industries, who also own the Dunlop uh, car tire business. And so Signing up with these uh, uh, companies like this, you know, gives us a great amount of security uh, and, uh, and belief in the partnerships that we have. Because Japanese companies like Globride, our, our, our distributor in Japan, and like Sumitomo, who's the owner of Dunlop, they they do not easily sign up to significantly sized contracts. And the one with Dunlop, you know, their commitment to Slinger is 125,000 Slinger units over a five-year period which if you equate that to consumer sales is around about $200 million, or if you equate it to sales or purchases from Slinger, it's around about you know, $100 million, give or take. So it's a very significant size agreement. Um, if we, and and, and, we, and we've, we've, we've uh, built up uh, distributors all over the world. Um, and, you know, and so uh, uh, as far afield as Australia, New Zealand, and India, in the Middle East, in South America and of course all across Europe, um, and again, you know, in North America, Canada, and and the United States, we operate uh, e-commerce direct-to-consumer businesses. Uh, 
of course, today, you know, our, our initial foray into the market was it with, with, a, with a tennis launcher, uh, you know, for tennis players. But uh, as many of you will know, there are some other versions of tennis which are hugely successful around the world. In the United States, pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports. I think there's already 3 million players in pickleball. Um, and uh, we'll be introducing a slinger version of pickleball later this year. Uh, we're also introducing a padel version. So padel tennis is a, is a sport that's played outside, mainly outside of the United States, uh, in Europe and South America. In Spain, for example, it's three times bigger than tennis. It's a highly social sport, and, and it's growing everywhere in the world. And so, we're, again, in the third quarter this uh, this coming year, we'll we'll have a, a paddle version of uh, of slinger. And then also in Japan, um, there is a spe specific sport called soft tennis, which is just for, just for the Japanese consumer. And we have a version coming mid uh, mid mid to third quarter, which is uh, going to address that market in Japan. All of all of the tennis uh, related um, businesses address a, a total addressable market of about 100 million players around the world, um, and all the tennis companies focus on what we call the core or avid players within that cohort. And that number is about 20 million. So there's 20 million people playing tennis on a weekly basis around the world. And, you know, whether it's a Slinger Bag or whether it's Wilson or Babalot or Head, every company is targeting these, uh, these core or avid players, and, and, and we're no different. Um, and so, you know, our goal as a company is to is to infiltrate that, that cohort with the Slinger Bag product, um, remembering that Slinger Bag is a product that is never, the like of which has never been seen, you know, or been available to a tennis player before. Of course, there's been traditional tennis ball machines in the market for 50 years, but these tend to be very large, very cumbersome, difficult to maneuver, difficult to use, and, and to power up with power cables and all that kind of stuff. Slinger bag is, uh, in my analogy, it's like a golf bag. So golfers uh, keep their golf bag in the trunk of their car. The golf bag has everything in it. When they have an hour, they go to the golf driving range and hit some golf balls. Well, for the first time ever, the same opportunity now exists for a, for a, uh, for a tennis player. You keep the slinger bag in your car. It has all your kit in it. It has a tennis ball machine in the, in the bottom of it, of course, and you go out and find a tennis court, or maybe you don't even you don't even need a tennis court. You just need a space, and you go hit some tennis balls. And so for the players, this is uh, eliminating that issue that I mentioned right at the beginning of needing a playing partner. And for the industry of tennis, actually, it's, it's, it's greatly enhancing the number of play occasions, as we call it, where people are um, um, uh, you know, playing tennis much more often. What, you know, what, one of the things that's very interesting is is that um, I think everybody's been watching the success of Peloton um, uh, within the sporting goods industry and how they've created a you know a, a, an incredible recurring revenue uh, model you know for their platform. Well, you know, one of the one of the things that we're doing at Slinger is that we're also making Slinger into a smart bag, and and our vision is to make Slinger the Peloton of tennis. That sounds a very lofty goal sitting from where we are today, but we really believe that in the partnership that we have struck with an artificial intelligence company out of Australia called Gameface, uh, we, have, we have made an agreement with them to, to adapt their already in-market artificial intelligence technology to tennis, and uh, you know, they've already started that process. And at the end of the day, once that process is complete, Slinger Bag will actually own the IP that relates to that artificial intelligence as it relates to, to the tennis industry. And with this app that we will launch uh, in six or nine months' time, we will be offering tennis players of all ages and ability the opportunity to get some analytics of their tennis, of their own tennis game that has never been seen before in tennis. Yesterday, there are many... Um, Companies out there with tennis apps uh, who are offering what I call static data, you know, how fast do I hit the ball, how much spin has it got on it, things like that. That's, that, of course, will be available too in our version of an app, but we will be offering video analytics, um, which are going to be so sophisticated and so uh, tailored to each player that it's uh, going, to, going to make it a must-have um, app for, for tennis players all over the world. And, and this will, for us, be, become a subscription model um, uh, you know, with a recurring revenue. So 
you know, that's a very exciting opportunity for us. And I really believe that we can take the market, the tennis market, and own it in terms of the, the digital um, experience that we can offer uh, tennis, we'll be able to offer the tennis players. Of course, all of that uh, adds up, uh, you know, to potentially a very successful uh, business for the Slinger Bag Company. Um, of, like all companies, when we started out, you know, we needed to put some financial projections together, uh, which we have here. Um, we wanted to be ultra conservative, and these projections really focus purely on tennis um, as, as the opportunity. Um, we see our business uh, in 2020, you know, um, Obviously, we've been, as I mentioned, selling slinger bags or, or posting revenues for about nine months. Um, you know, we projected in our first year that we would reach uh, $11 million in revenue. And um, I'm happy to report that we're very, we're very much on track to do that. Uh, our financial year ends at the end of April. And I think we'll be pretty much on the, on the button with that uh, financial projection. And then our business obviously grows over the next few years, and you know we, we, we see it rising up to you know just you know in the mid forty million dollar range. Um, but I you know I want to tell you that you know my view is that you know of course that that in itself is a lofty goal and would be a very successful tennis company, but th but those cumulative revenues over those five years equates to us succeeding in selling less than one percent of the twenty million tennis players a slinger bag. And my goal is a much higher percentage of penetration to, into the market than that. I know I think uh, you know less than one percent is is something that I would you know think is uh, very achievable. But you know I'm hoping and believe that we will, we will ultimately do a lot more than that. Um, yeah. So so you know at the end of the day, Slinger is a real product with a real management team with a real addressable market opportunity. And, uh, you know, with the addition of a smart technology that this uh, artificial intelligence app will bring to the product, I think that we really can um, deliver on, on our view that, you know, Slinger is the, you know, the, is a hidden gem within the OTC markets, first and foremost, and has the potential to be the peloton of the tennis world uh, over the next, uh, you know, three, three years at least. So, um, you know, with that, uh, you know, I'll... Uh, switch over to have a look at um, uh, who's firing uh, questions in at us. So I can see one question here. Uh, the question is, uh, is it the founder who has provided the loan to the current, sorry, to, uh, who's provided the loan for the current financing and will any further financing be needed? So yes, yeah, so all of the financing to date uh, that, that has come into Slinger Bag uh, has come from our founder, uh, himself personally or from um, a, comp uh, a company that he owns and, and runs. Uh, he's put in at the moment $6.2 million, and he's committed to continue to fund the company until we find the right financial partner to, to partner with us. You know, I'm looking for a strategic partner uh, for the long term. Our, our view as a company is that in 12, 18 months, we would like to be NASDAQ-listed company. Um, and so you know, finding the right um, partner for us to grow with over the next few years is, is a very important decision for us to make. Um, we are in, dis you know, we've been in discussions with, with many companies over many months, uh, and we've been offered lots of uh, financial opportunities, none of which I felt of right, has been right. But I'm currently talking to a number of companies, and I think we're getting very close to being able to uh, pull together, you know, or put in place a strategic partner that is going to help us uh, financially uh, grow uh, and achieve our goals over the next few years. I have another question, which is, uh, as the technology progresses, if I currently own a slinger bag, will I be able to update it with the latest technology? Um, the answer to that is yes and no. Um, yes, in part, so uh, some of the things that, uh, are, that are going to be coming with the slinger bag Will, will be quite easy to upgrade to uh, with, with the current bag. And of course, there are, you know, like, an, like anything in the world, like an iPhone or something, there's some things that you just can't upgrade to that would, would require, you know, to take a different bag. But at the moment, you know, over the next 18 months, the changes that we are making to the Slinger bag are, are you know, minor, you know, little tweaks here and there that are, that are helping to improve it. 
Um, and, and you know, we you know we might still continue to improve the battery, but things like that would certainly be able to be see or viewed as an upgrade opportunity to the current bag. We, we you know we'd certainly make that available to current users. So if someone's asking me if a slinger bag can be used for baseball or batting practice. That's a very good question. Uh, on our Instagram page, you will find some some videos of people using it for that. It's not obviously designed for that, but, but they seem to make it work. I think I failed to mention that one of our big opportunities and something we're already working on is that we're going to translate our slinger bag technology, our affordable, um, transportable, versatile concept. We're going to translate it to baseball and softball and to cricket, which is a sport outside the United States. But it's going to be available for baseball and for softball and I would imagine that would be, you know, the beginning of 2023. So we've already got some really interesting ideas on the drawing board. We're just about to go into a prototype uh, stage of, of its development, and uh, we think that we can address that market in in um, in a similar way that we're going to do to tennis. First and foremost, we're going to be hugely successful in tennis before we, you know, think about uh, bringing anything else to the market. Um, So someone's asking me, is the plan to sell the company to a larger player? The answer is no. Um, I can tell you that if we are successful in the way that I see it can, can happen, we will actually be one of the largest tennis companies on the planet. And, um, you know, that, that, that's our goal. So we're not ha we have no plans to sell Slinger Bag to anybody else. Someone is asking, any, any big endorsements in the works? Yes, uh, we have a number of endorsements that we're looking at. Um, you'll, you know, through my contact, I've already managed to deliver um, 12 of the top 20 players in the world a slinger bag. So Federer, Djokovic, uh, Nadal, Andy Murray, Nishikori, these, these kind of players have all got one, and I, I know they're using it. We're not asking them to endorse us yet because we couldn't afford that. Um, but I am talking to a number of uh, ex-players who have recently re retired, we already have on board Mike and Bob Bryan, the Bryan brothers who are endorsing Slinger. We have on board Nick Bollettieri, the most famous tennis coach in the world. Uh, and I'm talking to a small group, five or six other players who uh, are very well known, have very big followings in tennis, um, but are you know at the end of their careers, um, who are looking to get involved in, in a project or a company like Slingerback. So yes, uh, we'll be news in the works about that. Someone's asking, uh, can, can established tennis more machine companies come out and simply copy what we do? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, there are, you know, 10 or so other tennis ball machine companies in the world. Most of them are U.S.-based uh, companies manufacturing their product in the United States. Um, the fact that we have got uh, the Slinger um, uh, tennis ball machine built into a Slinger, Slinger uh, trolley bag, uh, uh, you know, Firstly, we have that very well patented, patent protected. Uh, secondly, um, I, un unless you, you source that trolley bag in China, I think it's impossible to get anywhere near the price that we offer the, the slinger bag in the market. I have seen you know, one of our competitors recently came out with, a, with a, um, a much cheaper version of one of their current machines. I think it's priced at $7.99. Um, but it still looks like a traditional ball machine. It doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing or as uh, functional as a slinger bag does. And what people like about slinger bag is the fact that it's akin to a golf bag, you know, that it's got lots of pockets. You can keep all your stuff in it. You don't have to carry extra bags uh, for the balls or the rackets or anything else that you're taking to the court when you go play. Try and get one more in. Um, What is the current production capacity? Someone is asking. There seems to be a bigger issue than demand. Yeah, so so we we you know like a lot of companies, we've got some challenges with uh, getting products over to the United States through lack of containers and vessels. But we are we have a plan in place to increase our, our capa production capacity up to 10,000 units by July uh, per month. That is 10,000 per month by July uh, 2021. So we're working, uh, you know, been working for the past few months on building that up and. Of course, we're talking to a number of companies about, you know, how best we finance that, uh, you know, jump in inventory that we need to get into an at-once delivery situation in the United States. 
Someone's asking about, finally, thoughts on the nut listing. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, 12 to 18 months, we are expecting Slinger Bag to be a a NASDAQ company. That's our goal. And, of course, uh, we need to deliver on our our expectations, projections that we're talking about over the next uh, 12 months, and I think that uh, we can certainly achieve that. Uh, maybe time for one more. Um, someone is asking about minimums within the distribution agreements. Yes, of course, we have minimums in all of the distribution agreements. Um, uh, they're very well defined and, um, and uh, you know, split out, you know, uh, in most cases by, uh, by year. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, how enforceable are the commitments? Well, of course, you know, if we wanted to, to, to enforce them, I think we could. You know, the reality is that, um, you know, if any of our partners felt that they were not able to maintain the projections that they committed to, then, you know, we would know that well in advance because we're, we're talking to them every day of the week. And, um, um, you know, I, 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 I feel that uh, we would be able to find an alternative solution, um, you know, with them, hopefully, or with somebody else if that was necessary. Okay, I'm being asked to leave it there. So I'd like to thank you for your attendance and for your interest in Slinger Bag. And um, um, please visit us at our website for more information at slingerbag.com. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you.